Hello everybody, this is Jim from Japan here, and I thought I would shoot a very quick uh, video of uh, the Yamaha QX1 in action with the HXC floppy drive emulator. Okay, uh, A couple days ago I announced that I was able to get it to work, and I've since then received a flood of emails and thought I would uh, very basically just kind of show you that it works and what it maybe looks like a little bit. Okay. Uh, if I have an opportunity, I may create a, a follow-up video with more detail and information, but for now, this should uh, kind of get the ball rolling for you guys a little bit. Uh, I have in front of me here the Yamaha QX1. Uh, it was purchased in Japan for about 50 bucks. Uh, really nice condition. It's not too bad. Cleaned it up a little bit here. Uh, as you can see over here, um, I have the Mammoth uh, five and a quarter floppy drive that I actually removed. Um, this drive, uh, to my knowledge, was working uh, except uh, over here there is a sensor for the disc protect and I don't think you can see it but there's one screw here and one screw missing so I think the individual who had this before me somehow removed or it broke these, this sensor. So I was having problems initially when I had the unit where it would not take the floppy disks uh, these five and a quarter floppy disks, uh, it wouldn't work. I also had the issue of trying to get the 96 TPI Maxell uh, floppy disks, and uh, those proved to be uh, quite elusive as well and expensive. But um, anyway, in front of me here, I have it uh, ready to open. I'm going to open it. Uh, you'll see down here, I have the the bay area where I removed the floppy drive, and uh, you'll see why here in a minute. I when you open this up, you'll see inside. Okay, and it's kind of messy over here at the moment. I'm still in testing phase. I haven't cleaned it up, but let's see. I have to make sure that back doesn't fall backwards there. Okay, um, and here, this is the floppy emulator. Uh, I have an older one. Um, I think that just means I have one that without the box or the casing and um, the, wow, I can't remember, see offhand the revision number. I think it's F. Um, but it's, it's indeed an HXC uh, unit. Um, if you get one of the newer ones, it's going to be the same. And I currently have a 128 megabyte SD card in it, just a standard SD card, uh, nothing fancy right now. Uh, I do want to point out, um, before I start it, that over here you've got the power cable. And the power cable is the big, big connector. You come over here, and you'll see that I've got an adapter, okay? and then the adapter comes all the way around here and it's the smaller one for the floppy size. You will need to get this adapter. You can find them on eBay of course but probably should be able to find them in any used computer shop. Uh, I found them easy to find. I think I went into a computer shop here in Japan and found them like four or five of them in one evening. So, and they're pretty pretty cheap. The other thing which could be a little harder to find, well not hard to find but hard to get right away is your floppy cable. And this here, as you will see, it is connected to the CPU board. I believe it's a 34 pin, standard. And then this cable runs all the way. Uh, you will see that I have actually the three uh, and a half and the five and a quarter connector. So I could actually chain my old drive uh, if it worked. Uh, but I'm not going to because I like the emulator version the best so far. Uh, here's the other connector. And you can see that it's connected into the HXC here, okay? Uh, I do want to point out that right here it appears that there is one little section that's twisted. Uh, please forgive me, um, I'm still a little bit uh, work in progress with regards to learning all the te technical stuff here, but uh, to my knowledge this could mean that the cable is a twisted model. Uh, this would be very similar to those on the S330 or the W30. Um, Whereas if I slide over here, uh, with the, here's the the well, it's hard to see there, the floppy cable on my drive before. There's no twisted part in here. It's all pretty straight. Um, but with this particular model, it is twisted here. So um, I'm not quite, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't quite uh, give you the technical specifics on that or why that is. Uh, perhaps somebody watching this video will recognize that. 
um, but I will certainly research that and in a follow-up video maybe explain that more, but I wanted to point that out. Um, and it's possible that if you, yours doesn't work, uh, I've done this in the past where I've actually reversed the cable and you have to cut the little knobby part on the plastic and then just reverse it. Uh, and then that will plug in and it will work just fine in that regard, so that should be okay. Okay. So, um, what then what I have is the, the SD card, uh, use the SHXC floppy emulator software, uh, you create an image file that has the specifications for the, the uh, old drive, which is 160 tracks, okay, and then, and it's an M MFM and Shugert, uh, Shugert style, so you get that set up, put it in there, and then I'll close this up. Okay, and now I've already gone through the process of formatting this floppy disk on the SD card, so uh, this video I'm not going to show you that, but what I am going to show you is by turning it on here, which I just turned on, okay, uh, I was talking a little bit, but there was a beep, um, let me quickly open this, oh actually if I go down here you can see the lights flashing, okay, um, if I open it up, I don't know if I can, if you can see that. Oops, sorry. Okay, it just blanked out. But it indeed it shows you that the floppy emulator is on and it's running. You go up here, and this is the play button. Um, slide over here. It may be difficult to read, but it basically says play mode. Okay, it says play mode, and let me see if I hold it there if it'll focus a little bit. Uh, play mode, so, and that just instantly started, okay? And I don't have this connected at the moment, but uh, I did last night record a couple things. It works fine. All of the buttons, I uh, had the manual. Um, I flipped through everything. Everything works great. The manual, the menus change. Um, it just works no problem at all. And when I'm recording a sequence, it'll save to the SD card, and everything works great. And now if you want to switch floppies, you just have to reach down in here and push a button. Uh, it's either the left or the right button. Either one doesn't matter. And then you just switch to the next floppy. And if it's not initialized, the QX1 will prompt you to initialize. If it is, then it'll just go and accept that new floppy. So um, to me, uh, the QX1 is a fantastic sequencer. Um, it's got the eight outputs, and uh, it, it, for real-time recording, I really like it. I'm kind of a real-time recording kind of person uh, versus a step recording. So with real-time recording, uh, anything I put into it, it comes right out uh, perfectly. And uh, the thing is built like a tank. Uh, it's, it'll last for a long time. Um, with that, with this floppy out, I don't have to worry about the drive breaking down. I don't have to worry about finding the 96 TPI discs anymore. I just have the, the SD card, and you know, if you spend a little time and get your blank floppies on there, get it all configured, um, which is actually quite easy. And then you start it up, and then you can just focus on your um, your playing. And I'm talking here. Uh, I can't compare before because I never really got the drive going. But uh, this QX1 is completely silent. Of course, you got the, the sounds of the, the keys, um, but it's basically very, very silent, uh, this whole unit, and so you don't have to worry about any drive noise or anything like that. Uh, not that it would affect your recordings, because you're recording data and not uh, sound, but, but it's a great little unit. Uh, I think now that the emulator works, uh, certainly if I see one in the store and it's got a good price, I'm going to pick up another one because uh, I think these are great units and they work very well. And um, uh, I, I would also like to uh, add a little plug here at the very end, a thanks to Synthfreak uh, over on YouTube. Uh, I watch her videos quite a bit. Uh, she had one and she was a great inspiration uh, on helping me to get mine going finally, and uh, I enjoy watching uh, how she progresses with her videos and how she uses the, the gear, and uh, so thank you for uh, the inspiration. I really appreciate that. So if you have a Yamaha QX1 or you've been thinking of getting one and you've been worried about the floppy disk, well, you can worry no more. Uh, you can check out the website, the HXC website, or send me an email uh, if you need further information on the actual device, um, and I can certainly uh, get you the link for that and uh, get you get you started on that. So. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'll close this video out. Just want to let you know that it does work. Um, once again, when you open it up, there it is. It's all plugged in, ready to go. 
Uh, took the drive out. It's much lighter. Well, a little bit lighter, but I mean, this is pretty heavy, the floppy disk over here. But it's definitely lighter, and uh, it, it's working perfectly. Okay, so that's the Yamaha QX1, and I'll catch you guys later. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.